What's up everybody, Chandler here, and guess what? The coolest thing in the world is I have a tripod, so I'm not shaky with the phone anymore. So all you guys who complain when my phone shakes, it won't shake anymore because now it's on a tripod. Also, I'd like everybody to vote one through 10 on whether or not you like my beard. Steph says I should shave it. I say, no way, Jose. So vote below, shave or nah. But what I wanted to talk about tonight was three things that you can do to not be so lonely during the, the pandemic. And loneliness before this pandemic was already a really big problem with a lot of people in the world. And so now what we're experiencing is people getting into a state of stream, extreme loneliness because we're not used to having so much time at home and so much time just basically in our own heads and our own thoughts and so much time not doing anything or stuck at home. So. And the first thing that I think you should do when you're back tackling or trying to battle loneliness and the feeling of loneliness is, number one, you have to accept the fact that it's a feeling. It's a normal feeling. It doesn't make you good or bad. It doesn't make you right or wrong. It's a feeling. So when that feeling comes around, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a fact of life and a fact of the position that we're in. So don't beat yourself up about it. Don't think anything's wrong with you. It's a normal human response to the fact that we're social creatures. So there's nothing wrong with you for being lonely. So the first thing that I like to do to battle this kind of thing is, number one is to set a schedule. So if you've never been in a position to where you have to set your own schedule, it's gonna be rather difficult to go out on your own and all of a sudden have all this free time and not know what to do. So some, some of the stuff I like to do is the night before I like to plan what I'm gonna do on the next day. So I know, hey, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna do my morning routine, I'm gonna eat breakfast, I'm gonna play with my dog, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna do some journaling. And so that way at least I have a semblance of what I'm gonna do for the day. And so what does that do? It allows me to see a progressive path of where I'm going to go throughout the day. And what does that do? Well, it puts me in the mindset that I'm going to achieve and accomplish things before I've done them and it gives me a reason to go through and achieve and accomplish those things and at the same time it distracts me enough to keep me busy while I think about the things I'm going to do. Do you have to stick with 100%? No, but if you have a schedule established and a schedule made, set up and a schedule made then it's going to put you in a position in a mindset to where you're okay and you're like okay I, got, I know what I'm going to do for the day. So number one scheduling. Number two thing that I like to do when we're, when we're experiencing loneliness, when we're stuck at home, and especially if you don't have family all over the place, is journaling. One of the coolest and most powerful and impactful things that you can do is journaling. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You, can, you open up your journal and you say, today I'm gonna spend 30, 30 minutes writing down my thoughts. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to spend 30 minutes writing down things that I did really well this week. Ne the next day, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes writing down some ideas and some new hobbies that I wanna accomplish. The next day, okay, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes doing this. So every day, plan on journaling. So get a paper journal. I'm a big nerd, so I like to have a moleskin journal because it makes me feel cool and like I have leather-bound books and rich mahogany and it smells good, just smelling the leather of the journal. But you can get anything you want, like a, a leather, you can have a leather-bound notebook, a composition notebook, something you got off the street for 10 cents. It doesn't matter. Just get it something to write in and save some time throughout the day to write your thoughts. Because what does that do? Well, it allows you to externalize your thoughts onto paper. And when you externalize your thoughts onto paper, it passes the time and you feel like you're involved in an activity where you're doing something socially because you are doing something socially. You're doing something with yourself. You're sitting there writing down in your journal. You're expressing your thoughts. You're expelling your thoughts. And it's a, a big social exercise that allows you to take your thoughts from here inside your head and externalize them onto a piece of paper. So then the next thing that I like to focus on when we're getting lonely and we're stuck in the social isolation environment is figure out a hobby that you can do at home. So for some people, this is like, hey, I'm going to exercise at home. For some other people, it's like, hey, I'm going to cook. I'm going to start learning how to cook new meals and I'm going to get really good at this cooking thing. And when this thing gets over, I'm going to be emerald. I'm going to be out there like pouring my butter on my chicken and doing the salt trick and all the crazy stuff. Or you can be like, hey, I'm going to be like the ultimate gladiator CrossFit guy and I'm going to learn how to snatch 900 pounds with one arm. Whatever it is, pick a hobby that you can do. And it might be, hey, I'm going to get really good at Sudoku. Or hey, I don't know how to do underwater basket weaving. So I'm going to jump in my pool. I'm going to go underwater and I'm going to learn how to weave baskets underwater. But pick a hobby that you can do and that you can kind of put your mind to and focus on. Because if you can kind of work on that hobby every day, it's going to do another thing to, to move your thoughts away from the fact that you're alone and lonely and move your thoughts into the idea that you're building and learning a new skill. You're building and learning a new strategy, a new tactic, whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you own a business, so you want to get better at your marketing. So you start reading books about it. You take a course on it. There's a million different things we can do to pick up a hobby at home right now because we have access to the internet, we have books, we have our, our gyms at home, you can go out for walks, whatever it is, you can watch the birds outside your window, whatever that makes you happy. Like for me personally, I like to cook. 
quite a bit now. So every day I'm trying to figure out a new recipe that I want to make. And some of them are complete and total and utter disasters. And some of them are great. And the good ones, of course, I always take pictures of and post it on Instagram and Facebook because that's what we do. But so that's what we do. We pick up a hobby that we can continuously improve on. I might fail and mess it up, but that's why it keeps me engaged. And that's why it keeps me excited. And that's what keeps me moving forward on it. So remember, your, your skills that you should adapt in this environment are scheduling. Scheduling is going to help you at least see some sort of semblance of what's going on in the day. And in addition to that, bolt on goals. So I'm going to make the schedule of what I'm going to do today, and this is what I'm going to accomplish. Then the next thing is journaling. Set yourself up in a place to where you have some time, 30 minutes to an hour throughout your day where you're journaling stuff. Maybe you journal a couple times throughout the day and just expel your thoughts on a paper. Uh, and some people, this is a thought I just had, some people don't like to write things down. It, it bothers them with the act of writing. So if you don't like writing and you don't like writing in a journal, make a voice memo. Start making voice notes on your phone because then you're just talking and it's just another way to expel those thoughts. And then pick up a hobby. Pick up something new that you've wanted to try, something that you've always thought about doing and you haven't done and just start learning how to do it. You can take courses on the internet. You can practice whatever it is in your house. It might be exercise, it might be cooking, it might be walking, whatever it is, pick something up that you can do and something that you can actually utilize to, to pass the time. And then a bonus thing for you guys is just get connected with people. Like, look at me right now. I'm talking to myself on Facebook, but I see people watching. So I feel connected to the world because I'm being social right now. I'm socially interacting with the world via this live broadcast. So you can set up things like a vlog. And that's what I'm doing on social media. You can download the House Party app and then invite all your friends to come and hang out on House Party. I've always wanted to... Hold on. We have a, we have a baby who wants to be involved. Hey... I've always wanted to um, have like little virtual poker sessions. And my latest thought is to have a virtual bar where everybody, one person gets to be the bartender and then everybody else comes and hangs out at the bar and brings their drinks. But so you can pick stuff up like that. And, and if you don't have anybody you can think of to hang out with, just post on social like, hey, who wants to hang out? Who wants to do a virtual bar crawl? Who wants to, do a, who wants to be the bartender this week? Who wants to do a virtual fitness class? All these things that allow us to be social and that we can do are available to us. So those are my tips. Those are my strategies in a nutshell, scheduling, and then the second thing is journaling, pick up a hobby, and then your bonus round is download some of these social apps, make a vlog, get on social and talk to people, chat. All of those things are great. Don't feel bad. And, and finally, to end this on a, on a cool note, don't beat yourself up over being lonely. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad feeling. It's a normal human emotion. It's something we all go through because we're social creatures and we need that social interaction to thrive. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll go back and forth and I'll work with you guys, see if we have anything to, to work through. If not, I will be signing off. It's been awesome speaking with you and I hope you all have a great day and I will see you later. See ya, Abriana. Say bye. Hey, bye. She's pumped. We're, we're making her a social butterfly, watch. Social butterfly. <laughs> Social butterfly. <coughs> Social butterfly. Social butterfly. Social butterfly. Okay, we're going to go play. See ya.